Welcome to Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia and the Castrol Motor Plan National Superbike Championships presented by Castrol Canada. Hello everybody, I'm Pat Gonzalez and this is round number two of our National Superbike Championships. With me is Craig Hill from Castrol and Craig, what makes this event so very special? Well, what makes it special to me, Pat, are the people down here on the East Coast. I mean, they just make it wonderful. John Doherty, his brother Pat, Gerard Van Heusen, the people from the Halifax Daily News, Q104, and all the very special volunteer workers who work so hard to make this event not only special, but an excellent event for us. But the track itself, you know, it's very, very difficult. The track's got a little bumpy over the last few years. The riders are having a hard time finding the line, but maybe that's an advantage to the race, too, because it's a great equalizer when everybody doesn't know their way around here and it makes the thing a lot better and power just isn't the answer here. Well, if you saw our opening round in the series from San Air International Speedway, you saw a great superbike race. Miguel Duhamel on his Mike Crompton prepared Suzuki waged a race-long battle with Steve Crevier on his Rick Hobbs, Steve Wyatt prepared Yamaha. They exchanged the lead throughout the race and then Duhamel made a daring move on the inside on the very last lap and held on until the checkered flag. Third place went to reigning Canadian Superbike champion Ruben McMurder on his Honda RC30. And so the standings after one race in the six race series is Duhamel with 15 points, followed by Steve Crevier and McMurder, who are tied for second. Douglas, Mercier, and then Vancouver's Craig Trinder in sixth. Goodfellow, who is still riding with metal screws in his arm from his Daytona crash, Fletcher, Clausen and Gannett in 10th spot. Craig, you know, it's interesting to note that Gary Goodfellow on his Don Nitz Suzuki is not racing his production bikes this year. He's concentrating all his efforts on trying to win the Superbike Championship. Defending champion Ruben McMurder is another rider who has parked his production machines this year as he's putting all of his efforts into retaining that number one plate. Others like Tommy Douglas will race in Pro 600 production, Pro 750 production, as well as Superbikes. Steve Crevier is another rider racing in three classes. He'll be aboard a 750 Yamaha in Superbike. He's got his 600 production Yamaha, and he's also racing the Italian-built Aprilia in the 250 Grand Prix Championships. Then there's Team Suzuki's Michel Mercier, the two-time former Superbike champion who's running both 750 production and Superbike. And second-year rider Miguel Duhamel is also racing in those two production classes. And while the riders will be very busy here this weekend at Atlantic Motorsport Park racing all of those classes, nobody will be busier than some of the mechanics and tuners who prepare those racing machines. I asked Mike Crompton, the Team Suzuki engine builder and mechanic, what his workload was like on a typical national race weekend. Uh, Pat, it's a pretty uh, heavy workload depending on uh, weather conditions, uh, track conditions. Sometimes we can just bring the bike out and uh, we have it pretty well nailed down. Other times we bring it out and there's a lot of changes to be done. Uh, gearing usually goes fairly quickly, uh, but the chassis setup is uh, the critical part, getting the power to the ground. Today we'll show you two races, the Pro 600 production final, as well as our big national superbike event. And we've got quite the field for the 600 race here today, Pat, with representation from all the manufacturers. But, you know, our viewers have got to sit back and look for the local riders out here, people like John Ramsey, because I think he's going to give our series regulars a real tough time today. Well, the early morning rain here has moved off. The skies are clearing. The sun is out. And we'll be back at Atlantic Motorsport Park with our Pro 600 production final in just a moment. Come back to Atlantic Motorsport Park. The Pro 600 production machines have rolled up to the line following their warm-up lap. Now here's Craig Hill with the starting grid. Row number one has Douglas on the pole with Crevier, John Ramsey, and Mark Green alongside. Row two has Picot, Royer, and Brisson. Interesting, Craig, Brisson and Picot, both rookies. The third row, it is Clark, Monroe, McDonald, and David Grummet. In row number four, Trent McKinnon, Stephen Burke, and Giselin Gingras. Row number five, Mike Higgins, Michelle Lavalle, Jacques Gannett, and Miss Tony Sharpless. Riders revving up those machines, looking for the flag, and we're away. Ramsey, number 99, 107, Crevier, those motorcycles wheeling as they head down into the bottom of turn one. 107, Crevier grabs the early lead. Douglas, number two, and Ramsey, 99, side by side. As they come into the hairpin, Tommy Douglas up to the outside, but Crevier will hold on a top spot. Douglas, number two, all over Crevier for the lead here on the opening lap. Ramsey has moved around into the second-place position. 
So John Ramsey, who knows this racetrack better than anybody else, has moved up into the second place position. But it is Steve Crevier, the winner at San Air during our season opener, leading here on the Yamaha. Ramsey on the Honda runs second. Tommy Douglas on another Yamaha is back in the third place position. They head up through the roller coaster. Crevier still at the front. Ramsey 99 getting a little bit out of shape as he's really pushing that Honda to the limit. Then it's rookie Pascal Picot, number 21 on the Yamaha in fourth. And another local rider, it is Mark Green from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia on another Honda back in the fifth place position. Ramsey 99 works his way up to the outside off of the final turn as they complete lap number one. It is still Crevier, 107 year leader. Ramsey number 99 in second and Doug us back in third. Pat, we talked earlier on the opening about how tough it is to set your bike up for this racetrack. And you, if the viewers will just look, they can see the front suspensions and the rear suspensions having to work very, very hard on this racetrack. Greg, the pavement here at Atlantic Motorsport Park, of course, has been weathered over the years. There are some very bumpy sections, as you mentioned. And the trick for some of these riders, especially those who do not run here regularly, is to try to find that fast, smooth line. There is Ramsey, who pulls out of the second place position. But now Tommy Douglas is making a move up onto him to challenge for the number two spot. Number 21, Pascal Picot runs fourth, and 247 Mark Green is back in the fifth place position. 107 Steve Crevier having taken the lead off the start as he works his way back around up into the carousel. Douglas moves into second, he runs wide, and Ramsey goes right back into the number two spot. John Ramsey, 99, retaking that second place position after Tommy Douglas had muscled his way around. Pat, you can see how a local knowledge of this track helps because the track being very bumpy, he just slid in there and got in the right spot and away he goes again. The top five riders still tied together. Crevier, 107, your leader, 99, John Ramsey in second. Then it's number two, Tommy Douglas, third. The fourth place rider is the highly talented rookie, Pascal Picot, number 21, and then Mark Green, 247. The front running three riders bunched up, and here is Douglas on the inside of Ramsey. He will move back around into that second place position. So for the second time in the race, Tommy Douglas has been able to push his Yamaha up into the number two spot, and now he's all over Crevier for the lead as they work their way through the carousel. Douglas starting to make his move now after having his problems at San Air when he crashed in the qualifying heat, was forced to start at the back but had a strong run up to finish in second, and Crevier is off the racetrack into the grass. Steve Crevier got too wide out of the last turn, and now as they go into turn number one, Crevier again swings wide and Douglas will go through underneath into the lead. Ramsey, 99, also comes through in the second place. So it's Douglas, number two, your leader now. 99, Ramsey up in the second. 107, Crevier is third. 21, Picot in fourth. And 247, Mark Green runs back in fifth. And there are the standings with Douglas, the new leader, followed by Ramsey, Crevier, Picot, and Green in fifth. Then it's Brisson, Royer, Monroe, McDonald, and Grummet in tenth. And if you remember, Pat, in our first race at San Air, Quebec, you'll know that it was dominated by Yamaha machinery. So it's interesting to see John Ramsey on a Honda up in second place. There is the number 51 machine. That is Mike Higgins from Truro, Nova Scotia. On his Yamaha, he runs back in the 15th place position. Tommy Douglas, your leader, 99. Ramsey in second, 107. Crevier, who led for the first few laps of this one, being pushed back into third. It is still 21. Pascal Picot in fourth. And Mark Green running in fifth. There you can see the separation among the top five machines. And it's still really anybody's race up front. Although right now, Tommy Douglas looks as though he's starting to stretch it out just a little little bit over Ramsey number 99 as they work it up through the roller coaster further back 26 Lindley Clark runs in 13th and he's got about four riders right on his rear tire as they head up through the roller coaster as well number 250 there's Gislin Gingra just moved around 999 Jacques Gannett to move up into the 16th place position it is Gingra 250 on the Suzuki RG500 that is the machine that dominated the 600 production class back a few years ago Douglas, your leader, has gone through 99, Ramsey in second, 107, Crevier runs third. Pat Douglas has certainly jumped out in front, and I had a chance to talk to him about his success with his new Yamaha FZR 600. Well, 
Yamaha has come up with a real little rocket ship. Uh, this FZR600 really goes, and uh, I'm just as surprised as most of my competitors are about the speed of it. Uh, also running Dunlop tires, they seem to be sticking really well. Uh, over the winter, I went to Australia and New Zealand and took on some more experience and rode against some of the guys in the World Superbike rounds here, so I feel pretty good. Um, it's a good bike, and I'm riding well. You're looking at the fierce battle for second place involving 99 John Ramsey of Sydney, Nova Scotia, 107 Steve Crevier from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, and number 21 Pascal Picot from Granby, Quebec. Here's Crevier to the inside of Ramsey. He will move into second as the riders run through the carousel. Crevier 107 and Ramsey. Pat, and there are the final standings with Douglas taking his first Pro 600 win in two races, followed by Crevier Picot, Nova Scotia's John Ramsey and Green in fifth. Then it's Don Monroe, Roye, McDonald, Burke, and Grummet rounding out the top ten. And we'll be back at Atlantic Motorsport Park with the Superbikes right after this. Back to Atlantic Motorsport Park. The Superbikes have completed their warm-up laps. They're moving to their assigned starting positions on the grid. Some dark clouds have rolled in here. We hope it does not rain. Now here's Craig Hill with the starting grid. Thanks, Pat. On the pole position, winning those two extra championship points is Steve Crevier from Port Coquitlam, B.C. Then it's the current Canadian Superbike champion with the number one plate, Ruben McMurder. Next, the winner of our last race in Quebec, Miguel Duhamel on a Suzuki. And on the outside of row one, it's the winner of the Pro 600 race, Tommy Douglas. Interesting to note, Craig, there are two Yamahas, a Suzuki and a Honda on the front row. There is your second row, all Suzukis, Gary Goodfellow, Steve Dick, and Craig Trinder. The third row, Pilar, Clark, McDonald, and Green. In row number four, John Ramsey, Mike Griffiths, and rookie Pascal Picot. Row five, Jacques Gannett, Brissot, Steve Wikes, and Norm Murphy on the Kawasaki. The sixth row, Martin Ducharme, the veteran Steve Gervais, and former champion Michel Mercier. The riders revving those machines up, and we are away. Crevier 107 on the inside will lead him into the bottom of turn one. Trinder there, number five, goes way to the outside. He gets out onto the grass, and oh, there's Michel Mercier. Mercier has crashed in turn one as he appeared to just run right off the racetrack, and I think that is going to be it for him. Well, that's unfortunate for Michelle, Pat. He's had bad luck all weekend. He had bad luck in qualifying off the road, a few other things, and now he's crashed. But I like the little dance he does when he gets back on his feet. There is Ruben McMurder. He has moved around Tommy Douglas up into the second place position. And now McMurder takes the lead as they headed up into the roller coaster. McMurder goes to the front here on lap one. As there you can see the front wheel coming off the ground on the Honda RC30. So it is McMurder number one leading on the Honda 107 Premier on the Yamaha in second. And now Miguel Duhamel has charged through into the third place spot. Number two, Tommy Douglas runs fourth. And Gary Goodfellow on the Suzuki is back in the fifth place spot that is your top five as they complete lap number one and McMurder now starting to open up some ground over the second place rider Crevier number 107 but he now comes under attack from Miguel Duhamel as they break into the hairpin here the slowest corner on the racetrack that very tight left hand hairpin and McMurder runs out in front Steve Dick is back in the sixth place spot on yet another Suzuki McMurder number one again with that third place finish at San Air after a monumental battle and of course coming in here was tied with Steve Crevier for second in the point standings Crevier by winning the Michelin pole position has for the moment moved solely in the second place so McMurder right now finds himself third in the points and he takes the lead 97 Duhamel again all over Crevier he wants to get around the Yamaha rider to try to get after the leader McMurder before he gets too far away but as they come out of the carousel, it is still number one, McMurder leading, then 107, Crevier here in second, and number 97, Duhamel on the Suzuki back in third. Well, Pat, you can see that McMurder's come to grips with that Honda RC30 on this racetrack. He's riding it very well, and it has a lot of low-end torque under the corners. There's Tommy Douglas, number two. He's off the racetrack, but I think back on, but he will lose a couple of positions. As they head up out of the hairpin, it is still number one, McMurder, your leader, 107, Crevier second, then Duhamel, followed by Goodfellow. Steve Dick now has moved up into the fifth 
play spot. Steve Dick, who did not race at the season opener at San Air, but has joined our national superbike championships here at Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia. Good battle here for that second place position. Grevier managing to hold off Duhamel number 97, but you can see that Duhamel is just looking for the slightest opening to try to get around Grevier here on the Yamaha. That, of course, is the brand new Yamaha OW01 that has been very impressive in World Superbike Racing. Further back, number 21, Pascal Picot and 350 Mike Griffiths are having their own personal battle. Duhamel continues to put the pressure on Crevier as they come into the bottom of turn one. It is still McMurder out in front by about 15 or 20 bike lengths and Duhamel into the hairpin moves to the inside of Crevier and will put his Suzuki into the number two spot. So Steve Crevier who led early until McMurder got around on the opening lap going into the roller coaster. The race for eighth moves through the hairpin 163. Quebec's Benoit Pilaw trying to hold off the two Nova Scotia riders, Mark Green and Clyde McDonald. There you can see part of the dedicated and enthusiastic fans here at Atlantic Motorsport Park. And there are the standings, Pat, with the number one plate holder on his Honda RC30 in front, followed by Duhamel, Crevier, Goodfellow, and Steve Dick. Then it's Douglas back up to sixth after his come up with Trinder, Ramsey, Pilon, and Green following up that bunch in front. Crevier closing on Duhamel as they go into the carousel, and Miguel Duhamel on that blue and white Suzuki has not been able to shake Steve Crevier on the Yamaha. The two riders clear the carousel, and as they come into the final turn, we see that spectacular overhead shot. And here's how we get it with cameraman Tim Moses perched on top of the Honda Tower. What a way to make a living. And speaking of making a living, I asked Steve Crevier if it was difficult going from a production bike to a super bike all in an afternoon. Yeah, going from any production bike, Pat, would cause a problem because going from production tires then on to slicks, uh, the production tires, they don't, they don't uh, adhere as much as the slicks do to the asphalt, so it takes you a while to differ, you know, to, to compensate for that difference. Miguel Duhamel, who is certainly a versatile rider, a champion motocross rider until turning to road racing, and Duhamel goes through on the inside to take the lead away from Ruben McMurder, who has led since the opening lap. So Duhamel, who first worked his way around Crevier and then was able to shake the Yamaha rider, closed on McMurder and finally has been able to get around. They come out of the final turn and back on the front straightaway. And again, it's just a couple of bike lengths separating the Suzuki of Miguel Duhamel and the Honda RC30 of Ruben McMurder. And there's Steve Dick. He's come up a long way, but right behind him is Tommy Douglas. And what a recovery, Pat, for a guy that ran off the road earlier. Four-way battle here for that fifth-place position, Craig. Steve Dick currently holds the fifth-place position, as you said, but Douglas is right behind. 99 Ramsey and Trinder, number five, also battling there. We're back with the leaders. 97 Duhamel and number one McMurder, as he has not been able to shake the Honda rider after getting around. So McMurder now moves through on the inside. Duhamel will take it right back as they shuffle it going up through the roller coaster. First it was Duhamel, then McMurder, and Duhamel takes it right back. Incredible racing up front. This is reminiscent of the battle that Duhamel had with Grevier during our opening round at San Air. But instead of the Yamaha rider, it is McMurder, the defending champion on this very impressive Honda RC30, who is right with the Suzuki. And Craig, the RC30 appears to be very well suited to this twisty up and down track, and here is McMurder on the inside. He will take the lead in a turn one. Well, McMurder's riding that bike extremely well, Pat, no doubt about it. But look at this kid from Quebec. He's all over him like a cheap suit. Number one, McMurder out of the hairpin. Duhamel right on his rear tire. Crevier, number 107, in third. And then it is Gary Goodfellow here all by himself in fourth. And we'll be back with more from Athletic Motorsport Park in a moment. Motorsport Park in the conclusion of round number two of the Castrol Motoplan National Superbike Series. I'm Craig Hill along with Pat Gonzalez, and that's Miguel Duhamel, who has once again taken the lead away from Ruben McMurder on this, the final lap. McMurder right up alongside as now McMurder goes into the lead. Duhamel being shuffled back into second. It has been a seesaw battle for the last two or three laps. The riders at times swapping the lead four and five times per lap. And as they head up into the roller coaster now for the final time, it is the Honda RC30 of McMurder leading the Suzuki GSXR 750 of Miguel Duhamel. And again, just a bike leg separating the two riders. 
McMurder must feel the pressure here from dual mile number 97 as he closes to within just a bike length. Into the carousel for the final time. Remember, Duhamel was able to get around Crevier at San Air during round number one in the very last corner for his victory. And he's trying to pull off the same move here on McMurder as he pulls up alongside Duhamel. Moves down to the inside and he will take the lead. The checkered flag is out at the line. And there it is. Miguel Duhamel has won here at Atlantic Motorsport Park. McMurder will finish in second. And Steve Crevier takes the checkered flag to finish in third. But what a run by Miguel Duhamel. He had just the one opportunity as he came through underneath of McMurder in the final corner and takes the checkered flag for the win. Well, a little shove from Ruben just goes to show he didn't appreciate that move by Miguel, but the crowd here sure did. And here are the final standings with Duhamel winning his second superbike race, putting him ahead in the championship point standings with 30, followed by McMurder, Crevier, Goodfellow, and Douglas in fifth. Then it's Vancouver's Craig Trinder, Steve Dick, Ramsey, McDonald, and Mark Green in tenth. Yes, Craig, indeed a courageous move by Miguel Duhamel to take the honors here at Shubenacadie. For Craig Hill, I'm Pat Gonzalez.